the MD-80 flight deck. The MD-80 has been around since the late 70s, early 80s. So the aircraft is kind of old. Uh, but it has had some technological upgrades. But it's not the same exact kind of upgrades that the 737 has. But it's still pretty good. But this aircraft has what's known as an EFIS package. Rather than just getting a brand new model like the 7.3s. It has an EFIS package. EFIS stands for Electronic Flight Instrument System. And what that basically means is that it has an electronic navigation system now. Rather than going off of dials it has a computer so it added fmc's and also added the electronic uh radar and uh, artificial horizon so i will start this tour on the left like i usually do all the way on the left down the bottom you see the hom select head and you see the oxygen regulator panel over here is the tiller the tiller is what's used on the ground to steer the aircraft over here is the radar control. You see different controls there, arc, map, and the range all the way on the right, and then different options you can see here. Those options can be explained. It will be explained in my MD-80, the MD-80 portion, of the, excuse me, the simulator portion of my video. So, moving on, we have the interior, some interior lights. Over here is the Mach airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator reads both Mach and airspeed, of course. Mach is displayed in that little skinny window on the, on the top, and then the knots is the, the dials of the numbers around it. Below it is a dual RMI radio magnetic indicator that has, can pick up VORs, DDFs, as you can see right there. And those are two different kinds of waypoints that you can, that you can uh, select to use to help for navigation or help with positioning. So, moving on, the screen on the top is the artificial horizon. And the screen on the bottom is the radar. This aircraft, like I said, got that changed from dial to digital. So, moving over here, the top where it says off is the altitude. It says it in thousands of feet. And then right below it, that blank screen right there is the instantaneous vertical speed indicator. That is electric, of course, in this aircraft. And it, co it reads in hundreds of feet per minute going up and down. Moving down is the fuel quantity gauge. Now, in this aircraft, it has two extra fuel tanks. Most M Some MD-80s have them, some MD-80s don't. In this case, this one does. This right here is the autopilot mode indicator. This tells you what has been selected in the autopilot. So airspeed, heading, etc. So that's, what, the pilot, that's the, what you're telling the plane to follow. That's just a visual indication of it. So moving over here, these are brightness knobs. So the PFD is for the top and the ND is for the bottom. Now, it's not an actual PFD like the 777 or the 737 NG, but it's the same concept, so that's why they control each. So, what we have here is standby instruments. In the middle is the standby altimeter, and under here is the standby airspeed indicator. Over here is the standby artificial horizon. And this is mechanically controlled, whereas this one's electrically controlled. Of course, plain and simple, see. Over here is the fuel quantity, left, right, and center. This is nice. This little feature is nice because this actually calculates the total fuel and then it calculates the gross weight. It's a couple of less things the pilots and the mechanics need to uh, calculate. Over here is the EPR limit buttons. Now these buttons are very important. These help limit the engine, which is uh, indicated by that yellow triangle on the top gauge there where it says EPR. Those are limits that the engine can have at different various stages of flight. So take off, it can have a certain speed, MC, uh, climbing, cruising, etc. It's very important for preservation of the engine and fuel. So moving on, we have the fuel temperature gauge right here, fuel flow and fuel used gauge. The fuel flow is the dial around it and the fuel used gauge is the numbers inside it. So when this aircraft flew in, 3,609 pounds of fuel were used. So moving on to the engine indications, left engine, right engine. We have the N1, that's the fan on the, fan on the outside, the low pressure compressor. Eper on the top, Eper is engine pressure ratio, that's the pressure coming into the engine divided by the engine coming out of the engine. And that is on all turbines the main indication for power. So moving on down, EGT, that is the exhaust gas temperature, that's the uh, temperature that's going out of the engine. And two, that's a little, it's a smaller compressor, and that actually what the pilots and the mechanics use to turn on the engine. So they look at that indication, a certain speed, you should get that, and at a certain speed, they move the fuel, they move the fuel lever into the open position, that adds fuel to the engine. I'll show you those later. And beyond, on the top, you have the oil pressure, oil temperature, 
and oil quantity. And that is the flap gauge down the bottom. Now the flap gauge is it says reading 20 and the, pro the reason it's reading 20 is because these flaps have actuators rather than jack screws. So when planes and hydraulics hasn't been on, eventually for, it's gonna lose pressure and the flaps are gonna drop. And that's exactly what's happening here. So, moving on. Gear handle, gear handle resembles a wheel, and the reason it resembles a wheel is because in the past, in the 30s and the 40s with the DC-3s and other airplanes, the gear and flap handles were the same feeling. So, sometimes the pilots would accidentally bring the gear up rather than put the flaps up upon landing and of course crash the airplane. So, with ergonomics and psychology, the landing gear is handle represents a wheel, and the flap represents a wing. So, you know, now, FMCs on the left and right, and the weather radar. Now, not all MDAs have a weather radar. This one obviously does. So, the FMC, Flight Management Computer, what that does is gives, calculates weights and route information for the pilots, and the pilots have to put in certain route and airplane information, and weather information. So, moving over here, on the bottom are the hydraulics controls, left, right, and auxiliary. And over here in this cap thing here is called the PTU, the power transfer unit. That brings auxiliary fluid to from the right side, the power of the left side, via that switch. Fuel quantity gauges, fuel hydraulic pressure gauge, excuse me, hydraulic quantity gauges, and hydraulic hydraulic pressure gauges. And then the right side is the same as for the captain. This is the first officer. Moving on down. We have the spoilers, throttles, forward and back. Down here are the two takeoff go around switches, and that, when you push, automatically push the throttles forward to max power, and so the pads can go around when they need to on landing. And then the reverse thrust, just bring them up all the way and then bring them back down. This is the valve position indicator. This is for the outflow valve on the back. Now, this is obviously showing almost all the way open. So if I was to pull this, which I'm not, it's, it would, this would actually spring down and this would come here and the valve will fully open when it, right now it isn't fully open. It's open a lot, but not completely. So, I mean, down here, the fuel control levers, right now they're in the off position, but to put them up, push them in, bring it all the way up to the on, and then to cut them off, you just bring, push again and you bring it back down to the off position. Over here, we have the VHF one and two, that's the comm radios. ADFs 1 and 2, internal lights, transponder, and back here are the rudder trims and the auto brakes. You move this and you arm it. Rather than the Boeings, you just move it and it automatically arms. Low red panel. The lower order panel has the enunciator lights that shows all the cautions and warnings for the aircraft. Windshield rubber controls, pressurization control panel, pressurization gauges, air conditioning or environmental control system. Fuel control system, which is the fuel pumps, and here's the those extra auxiliary tanks, like I told you in this aircraft. Engine indication, uh, excuse me, uh, controls. That's the engine start switch, and that's the fuel heat switch. Pneumatic pressure that gives the amount of pressure that's in the ducts that they can su su uh, supply, make sure they have enough air to start the engines. So, and there's the passenger lights for smoking and uh, seating. Over here, APU control, there's the battery switch right here. Electri electrics, left bus, right bus for the APU, external power, and it also has the engine generator switches on and the APU generator switch. APU RPMs and EGT, the electrical meter, lights, HF radio, and the circuit breakers. All right, this is the simulator portion of the MD-80 uh, video. And I will be showing you the startup of the APU as well as the alignment of the IRUs. Cool. So, first thing I do is come up to the auto, up to the overhead panel. And the overhead panel, the battery's right here. I turn the battery on. All right. And once the battery's turned on, we bring this to run. And then to start for a second. So one second in run, another second in start, and then you let go, it springs back into run, and then the, the, uh, the APU inlet door opens, so let the air in, and the tur star turbine starts, and then that's when the RPMs start to go up. Okay, now that my pow the power is on from the APU, 
You see, you see this light on. There's APU available. And what you do is first you have to reset the generator. It springs back into norm. And you do uh, one bus, wait for five seconds, and then go to the next bus. And that's it. Power is being given to the aircraft by the APU. To get the bleed out of the APU, the APU bleed valve is not like on the Boeings. It's actually right here where the APU panel is, and where it is is right here. APU air on. So on, and then air conditioning. If you want to the air conditioning, that's where you have to put it. So this is actually the APU bleed valve in this aircraft. The IRUs or the gyros are not aligned. The airplane doesn't know where it is. So what we got to do is align them. Now you've seen this in my other videos, but in the MD, I'm going to show you now again in the MD-80. So first thing you got to do is go out to the IRU panel, which in this airplane is over here. Right over here. Same procedure as before. And both the nav. Those two little orange lights say that it's on DC, and then the two white lights on the top will say align. There. Now that that's done, what we can do is go back down to the FMC. I remember when I showed you in my 767 Tidbits video that you, have, you, have, you can put the IKO code in there, not the IATA code. Now, in the MD-80, it's got an electric, electronic gyro, which, you know, it gives the attitude indicator, so at least it knows when it's right side up. The 767 and the 757 don't have that. The MD-80 does. So, that's why you see this here. So, right now we are actually in Toronto, Canada, and the ICAO code is CYYZ. So, type in CYYZ, put it in reference airport, and then push this button to get it down here on the scratch pad. And then right there to put it into the computer itself. And then after a while, it'll align itself. Okay, now the engine's are actually on. The way to transfer power in the MD-80 is actually extremely simple. All you gotta do is come up to here and turn the generators on. See how it transfers power from the APU to the engine generators, just like that. And then I can just shut this off like that, and then just shut off the APU. Okay, now what I've done is I've zoomed in both the radar map and the controls here. Controls here on the left, alright? Now, what I was saying before is that this is the range, so I increase it. That's what it looks like, okay? And then, of course, like I said, there's different features. There's plan mode, map mode, which is used normally a lot, the arc, and then the compass rose. Now, see, the regular compass rose is just in, is if just in case this part fails for some reason, pilots still have something, some other, some of a backup to navigate with. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Overspeed. Overspeed. Dog. Dog. Stabilizer. Fuck lap. Lap. Stabilizer. Lap. Gear, landing gear, and yo. Yep, right lock pump on up to three. Okay, now open that and open it. See, now the PTU is PTU motor is open. Ah, yeah, we're open. And now the fluid's going from the right side to the left side. <clears throat> supposed to be both at three, eh? Yeah, both at three. That's it.
The gear door should be up. Okay? The gear door is off. So, and set it off now. Same thing backwards. And then the circuit breaker.